In this particular session, we are going to look into how to structure and search a literature review with a practical example. In the last session, we looked at how to structure literature review for discussion on an individual variable. In this session, we are going to focus on what if you have got multiple variables in your study and obviously you will have multiple variables. You may have a model like this that we have developed in earlier sessions. Now, what if you have got a model like this? How do you shape your literature review? Now, we have already discussed that your literature review will have two subsections or it can be divided into two subsections. One is individual discussion on the variables and the other one is theoretical framework and hypothesis development. Now, we've had a look at how to develop a discussion on the variables when you are discussing the variables individually. And what we discussed was this, that if you've got variables, like this is the proposed model, and these are our variables here, each one of them. Now, for individual discussion on the variables, you will have separate subsection on each of the variable. Now, this particular structure is common when you are doing your thesis. However, for research paper, this structure might change. For research paper, you might focus on just one key variable and that is discussed individually. While all these other variables may be discussed in relationship to other variables. And when you are discussing or developing your hypothesis, you may put in those elements of individual discussion in your literature review. Now, in this particular session, we are going to focus on this second part, the theoretical framework and hypothesis development. Now that we have done the individual discussion on the variables, we are going to focus on the second part. So you can structure your literature review for theoretical framework and hypothesis development in two ways. Now, this is the first structure. Normally for research paper, I prefer this one. Now what I've done here is, look at this, servant leadership is just individual discussion, environmental behavior, individual discussion, or you are discussing servant leadership, that is your IV, and you are discussing environmental behavior, that is your IV individually. And what do you discuss when you are having individual discussion. We've already done that and the link will be shared in the description. What about these rest of the variables here? How are they discussed? Do we discuss their definitions just as we discussed or just as we presented in earlier videos on individual discussion? What about these variables? Yes, we do discuss their definition. We do discuss their importance, but under this one single subsection. So when we are discussing the mediating role of green identity here or green environment or green trust or green climate, what happens is you you give it the heading like this mediating role of green identity. And in there you start with the conceptualization of green identity its importance. Now all those elements you can incorporate here that we have discussed earlier when we talk about individual discussion of variable. The link will be shared in the description as well. Now once you have discussed this variable individually under this particular section, then you start developing its linkage with servant leadership here and environmental behavior here. And you try to establish that why green identity is a mediating variable. And same goes for all these other variables as well. Now, this particular structure is well suited to your research papers because you've got limited space. Now, there is another structure as well that can be followed. Now, this is the, the structure. Now, in this case, if you have a look here, look at this. You can have separate discussion on each of the relationships here. Servant leadership, green identity, servant leadership, environmental behavior, then green identity, empowerment and all others. And then the mediating role of each variable. 
Now before this, you can obviously do individual discussion on each of these variables as well. Now this particular structure with so many subsections under the literature review chapter is well suited for a research thesis. Although yes, you can follow this in your research paper as well. But normally if you do not have such a complex model with so many variables, obviously you can follow this structure if you may, if you may have just one or two mediating variables. Now the choice of structure also sometimes is dependent on where we are submitting our research paper. So it's always a good idea that if you've selected a journal, just have a look at how they are writing, how the existing researchers have written for that particular paper. Now this will give you an idea as to what the journal prefers, what the reviewers for the journal prefer. Now that we know that this is how we can structure our literature review. Now we did discuss how to write when we are discussing a variable individually. Now in the next session, the focus will be on how to write your literature review when you are trying to develop relationship between different constructs. Thank you very much.